Blog Talk Radio. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Vicki here again. It is April 9th, 2014. And this show today, we are going to cover info on uh, the child task force that was put into place some years ago and um, different, different information we found out on that. I'm also going to talk about how the court system works um, and different things you should know about your hearings. Um, the task force barely survived six months out of the gate. Why? That's what we're going to tell you. You never want to create groups that give CYS more power, and apparently that's just what happened. So then what do we do? That's a good question. We are working on it and coming up with some good solutions. Number one, no lawyers, uh, guardian ad litem, social workers, judges on the panel. Uh, judges basically are politicians. They are elected, and many make in excess of $170,000 a year. Um, some of the things we're going to be discussing, and then I'll go into um, the lineup of court hearings if they do take your children. So oh, I have a caller on the line. We're going to go to that caller and get started on the task force. Hello. Hello. How are you? Well, Hello. I am doing well. Thank you for mm-hmm. taking my call. Well, I am really interested to hear on this. I <clears throat> I did read about it. It is a long, long document. But I am really interested to hear your experiences with these people. Yes, I have to say, when this whole Penn State thing happened and um, when this task force was created, supposedly to address the problems that were exposed in the system by the Penn State scandal, I had had massive amounts of hope, you know. Um, I actually was out of state at the time. I saw about the task force in an out-of-state newspaper, and I immediately called several of my friends that were in Pennsylvania, um, and no one knew nothing of the task force. And yet there was a press release in an out-of-state newspaper. And so I actually called the governor's office, you know, because the governor was supposedly the one who decided to create the task force. Um, And so I spoke with several people over the course of about a week, and this was, um, it was in November at the time. Um, They denied that there was any such thing. And I said, this is in the paper, It's, it's a press release in the newspaper. And they said that they had no idea about it, that um, they just didn't know what I was even talking about. When I called back the next day, they said, (laughs) right, exactly. When I called back the next day, they said that, oh, they heard about it, but it was so new that they didn't really know anything about it. And, um, again, I explained, you know, my situation, that I was very interested in this. Um, And, again, I kept calling back over the course of a week, and every day a little bit more information was leaked. Um, And they said they were just in the process of creating this. There was going to be a group comprised of different professionals and also parent liaisons. That that got my interest piqued Um, because I had been experiencing the injustices of the system for a while. I was interested in that. Um, and myself and several friends um, actually discussed about who would be most appropriate if one of us would might want to be a parent liaison. And um, two of my friends actually called. They wanted to be parent liaisons. They were interested in that. We were told that somebody would get back to us. They took our phone numbers. Um, long story short, nobody ever got back to us. Um, I found out, you know, through doing research, that um, the head of the committee was supposedly the district attorney in Bucks County. Called his office numerous times, numerous friends, numerous family called. Um, I was told that, um, you know, basically don't call anymore. Um, And like so much for the task force, um, you know, don't you want to listen to my experiences? Don't you want to hear? Well, no, you know, that's not the point of this. The point of this is reviewing the Penn State scandal, what went on to create... Um, you know, better changes in the system, which is very frustrating. Um, Then 
I found out because there was something in the paper that um, you know the task force had wrapped up after six months um, that they had come up with recommendations. It listed what the recommendations were. They also mentioned that there had supposedly been a public hearing where people of the public could come and voice their viewpoints, which I had been trying to do for that point for months, um, and left my phone number with numerous people, never had gotten a call. Um, I know. Isn't that weird? Because there was actually like 17 hearings and 60 people testified, and yet no one seemed to be able to be one of those people. You know what I mean? Right, I know. No one that I knew, right. and they were very involved, very involved. I mean, these individuals had gone um, to the governor. They had they had been very involved. People knew their names. They were never asked to testify. They were never notified, nothing. And, and again, I left my name. I called. I, I was very vocal. I put in writing. Again, no one ever called me. No one ever ever invited me, nothing. Um, That made me a little bit distrustful of the whole process. Then when I found out what the whole gist of this was, in my opinion, was just that it gave CYS more power and it focused on reporting, which, from my experience, is not the problem. The problem is not that child abuse is reported. In fact, a lot of People report stuff just to get back at other people. Um, the fact is that that not the problem is not that it's not being reported. Although Joe Paterno or whatever happened there apparently didn't do his job, and some people don't. But um, the problem is that the system is not dealing with these problems correctly. The other problem is there's no oversight for this agency. It has a budget of over a million dollars in most of the counties, and there is no oversight. If you have a problem, there is nowhere to go once you have gone up the chain of command in CYS. Um, in other states, you could go to the Auditor General, you could go to the Inspector General, you could go to the Attorney General. They will help and they will advocate for you. There's nothing like that in Pennsylvania. There was actually somebody, um, Judy Schwank, who introduced a bill for accountability, that bill was never mentioned in the task force um, in their uh, recommendations. Why? (laughs) Why? Yeah. Um, And that was very frustrating. There were a group of us that got together, and we demanded to know why that was. Even we knew that there was going to be a vote. Um, A group of people went out before the vote we did a blitz. Um, we we went out. We talked with lawmakers in Pennsylvania. We called people. We um, faxed people. We we asked for this to please be included in these changes, and it it wasn't. Not only that, but the result from the lawmakers was was absolutely abysmal. Um, the one lawmaker told me point blank there was not enough money in the budget um, for something like that to be implemented, um, which is frustrating um, because we're talking about children here. Other people just frankly didn't even get back to our calls. Um, A number of them just put us on their newsletter list. Uh, One put up something on YouTube with her thoughts on it. Um, We tried to comment on the YouTube the comments were turned off. In other words, the public could not see the comments, which was like, why are we so afraid of people seeing what people are commenting on these bills? Why why the secrecy? Why are we so afraid of this? Um, what's going on? One member did contact several members of our group and basically told us that um, he he couldn't do anything, you know, but thank you very much for your opinions. Um, And that was pretty much uh, my experience with the whole task force, which was very, very frustrating, to say the least. Obviously, it was short-lived. I guess they put it, 
like you said, it was put in place with the whole Jerry Sandusky thing and Mm -hmm. all that. And I guess it was like three, they were to improve the reporting of child abuse. They were to implement Mm -hmm. any necessary changes to the state statutes and practices, policies, and procedures relating to child abuse and train appropriate individuals in the reporting of child abuse. And I know that these bills just came up where especially the training of mm-hmm. people and manda- you know mandatory reporters that have to be reporting but um mm-hmm. yeah Corbett definitely i mean he him and his leaders i mean they were the ones that appointed the 11 members of the task force and there mm-hmm. was um judge heckler i think that was his name he was appointed the chair of the task force mm-hmm. and then it just like they had these hearings like, I remember hearing this, too, other people that wanted to be involved in this and never heard back. But obviously they had these 11 hearings, and people were testifying somewhere to them. But, you know, everyone that we know, and you know a lot of people, I know a lot of people, and we didn't know All anyone either. All over Pennsylvania. Either. I mean, not yeah. just in one area of the of the state either. I mean, we're talking people all over the state. I guess you had to know somebody on the committee and they had to approve you to to be able to speak. I I assume that's what it is. That doesn't seem very fair um, if if that was indeed the case at all, you know. Um, The other thing about, and I just want to say, they made these laws where, okay, you're mandated now, you, you have to call or else, okay, but then they made another rule that if you're found that you file a fraudulent report, you're in big trouble too. And you would think that would be very straightforward, but with CYS it just sort of depends upon a lot of times politics, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other thing is some people actually have court orders where they are ordered to not call CYS ever. Okay, so now you have a law that's stating that you have to call and report child abuse, but your court order says that you can't. What do you do? Yeah. What do you do? You know, either way, you're in trouble. I I guess depending upon, you know, I I don't know. And I guess the it's a no win situation and that I think it's set up like that, don't you think? It's it's yeah, I, it's uh I do. It's, yeah, exactly. It's set up. What is it no way it's a definition conspiracy. The definition mm-hmm. was an agreement between two or more persons mm-hmm. to commit a crime or accomplish an illegal purpose through illegal action. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like they, they make it it it's so twisted that it it, you're right. it is. And and I know individuals who have been accused by doctors in writing, in medical reports of, um, you know, the doctor who was friendly with CYS did an investigation or they saw the child and concluded that there was nothing wrong, okay? Um, Even though another doctor had done one that wasn't friendly with CYS and concluded there was, but then the CYS friendly doctor put in writing, obviously someone has made a fraudulent report. Could you be, you know, legally held accountable for that? And then what authority does a doctor have to decide? But, I mean, and there are two sides of that story. There are people who have been victimized by having false reports made from them. There are people who know of people who have walked and, and gotten away with stuff, you know, because they were very powerful and politically connected, you know, um, yeah, from what I have seen, definitely. in my opinion. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's a shambles. The entire system is a shambles, and this task force, in my opinion, did nothing to mend well, the problems at- that existed. Like the the hearings, one of those eleven here, one of the eleven was when they organized. They had a, like a meeting. But looking mm-hmm. over who testified, who were these people that testified? They were all. I'm going to name some names here: Kathy Utz, mm-hmm. Michael Byers. Like they all are people that are either related mm-hmm. to government, related to CYS offices, 
on a yeah. government commission, programs. There were no people, you know, like regular people that they left testify. Yeah. They were all doctors and, re, you know, professional testifiers, I guess. These were the like individuals who were part of the problem, again, in yeah. my opinion, because right. they perpetuated the unhealthy system. And here's the other thing. And, and I saw this, I believe, in a newspaper. I, I can't remember the name of the newspaper. I think it was Penn Live. I can't remember. This paper said, in print, CYS knew about what Jerry Sandusky had done. They knew about it. It wasn't that it wasn't reported. It was. Right. They covered that over. Right. They knew it about it. The school had reported it. Um, it was known what had happened. And he actually had grand juries convened that were later dropped from what i understand um so it wasn't that it wasn't known what he was doing it was known it was covered over again this in my is, well this is isn't this cys they yes. everyone knows all these people know what is going on they're just covering it up they're just mm-hmm. covering it up there mm-hmm. it's it's too much of a big money deal Correct. for anyone to come out and say wow this we got to do something about this and mm-hmm. I am mm-hmm. so grateful to the people like Sean McMillan and Donnelly and all these people that are coming out and actually doing something. Um, we need a lot more of them in Pennsylvania, and it's starting, thank goodness, with the help of people like Lou and and Andy and people that are out there at least trying to get it. Some we had more asked attention for, to it. Right? We had asked for an audit in Pennsylvania, um, yes. like they're doing out in California. That was turned down by the heads of both the children and youth committees um, in both the Senate and the House. It was turned down. They said it was too expensive in order to audit um, their faulty systems, in order to make sure that children were being protected. And isn't that ridiculous when you think of all the money that's, yeah, that's there, how much could we be, you know, there could be so much saved by the waste and, well, Well, we know that it's... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. They're not really realizing um, what they're doing. They're damaging children. I mean, they are creating more cost in the long run. These are children who are going to grow up, one, to not trust authority because the authorities have thrown them under the bus for money. Um, they are children who are going to grow up with um some deep psychological scars because um, while with our mouths we're saying that child abuse is not okay and that we need to report it, a system is being perpetuated that in fact, again in my opinion, um, does not do anything to stop that. Well, it it promotes Um, it because we just talked about this the other day and unlike in many cases, they actually give the child to the abuser because they know the the the, uh, the other spouse is going to fight till bankruptcy to get that mm-hmm. child back. They're going to do whatever they can to get that child away from the abuser. They're they're purposely giving the child to the abuser mm-hmm. to keep the I fight going, that. to keep the money going. Yeah, I and did then, this on my show the other day. Yeah, and then they can. Uh, you know, then they're going to give jobs to therapists. They're having all sorts of agencies that are going to need to be involved. The child's most likely going to need medication. Um, It's a win-win for the system, not so much for the child. And eventually the taxpayers are going to have to bear the burden um, for that child who grows up and is not able either to hold down a job or or whatever because of those mm-hmm. things. And and mm-hmm. we're not looking at that long term. We're just looking at let's just get some money in the system today. Um, I think in one county in Pennsylvania, and I'm not going to say what county, it's a small county, very small, they have a budget of $54 million a year mm-hmm. for CYS. That's incredible. Yeah. It's a rural well, county, too. Well, we... Absolutely know that CYS receives funds every time they remove a child in an emergency basis. It's They make the claim that the child is in intimate danger, which is usually not the case. But what is happening is these workers see an easy way to make a buck, and they waste their time. Like, they just 
chase ridiculous stories and they lie and make up stuff to cover their butts. You know, the truth is is that they receive additional federal funds for every child they adopt out of the system. Every time they move a child from one home to another, claiming whatever they claim, they get more money. You know, in addition to funds, every time they, they report you know, an individual to state abuse registry. They get money for that every time they make, whether the allegation was proven or not, they make money by reporting that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's a child's it's true. In, in the system, when you're deemed guilty until, you know, you can prove yourself innocent, and it's that's not <laughs> the norm. You know, they regularly bounce, and obviously being a foster mom, I know this, they bounce children from one foster home to another in order to get the extra funding. They, it's like they, they just continue to close their eyes to those children who are in true need of removal for the easy buck that can be made by fabricating stories and, like, targeting the easy ones to prove with their lies. You know, they they fabricate, they lie, they destroy. It's called job security. That's how I look at it. I say it all the time. It's job security, profit and job security with these people. The average person, I think, in Pennsylvania looked at that whole task force. They decided that, oh, gee, we fixed the problem, and life goes on. And the reality Mm -hmm. is that the problems Mm -hmm. have not been fixed at all, that this, it seemed almost as if the task force was just created just so, Almost the public could be bamboozled that something was being done. Again, yeah. my opinion, nothing, nothing really came out of this except more power for an agency that already had way too much power and absolutely no oversight. And the task force did not fix any of those issues. Yeah, and well, yeah, right. And like you said, it just gave them more. I think, if I'm not right to this task force also came out, and not that it's a bad thing keeping watch over truant kids, but to take these kids from their families and put them in foster care is another part of the money-making corruption. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, these kids end up in foster care because they were truant, not because a parent was abusive or, you know, half the time these parents don't even know, and that is not, that is abuse, not knowing where their kids are, that they weren't in school, why the schools aren't letting the parents know, I don't understand. But. Yet I know I know one family, and the caseworkers knew, again, it was not a good situation. Every day those caseworkers would drive by that house, get those kids out of bed, and get them to school every day. So, mm-hmm. and there comes the question, why do certain people get preferential treatment? Obviously, caseworkers were not going to the homes of every truant child, why did that one particular family get particular help? In other cases, do you know what I mean? There's right. there's favoritism in in the system, and if you can keep kids in the home by just sending a caseworker over there, or by making a call and telling them to get out to the school bus, why isn't that being done for everyone? Why is that only being done in certain cases for certain families? Who and who decides that? Why is there preferential treatment? Um, uh, it's 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 amazing. Well, well um, I don't know if I talked about this, but I will just briefly. Now in these agencies, now they're spending more money to create this other group of people that is supposed to be spending more time on things like that and especially concentrating on getting these children with any kind of kin that they have out there. Mm. So now, I mean, yeah, and and they say that, but I've known of cases where, in one case, um, the kids went into foster care, um, and I won't get into that situation. But a list was given to CYS of seventy-five kin, and they did not let that child go with any of those people on that list. And some of the people on that list were indeed certified foster parents. And that child was placed in a home with a person who was friends with someone who was politically connected, and the individual wasn't even a foster parent at all. 
Well, that's I, that. My point is, is this whole task force that's being formed is a joke. Right. It's yes. one way for them to get more Agreed. money to act like they're Agreed. doing something. Agreed. And it's, it's not, Agreed. It's, yeah, it's just it's just a bunch of crap. And I I know for sure that Delaware County has started this. I'm not sure where the other ones are, but I know positively that they have. So okay. it's gonna be, and it would be fantastic if that's what they're doing, but. The other day I had, you know, told people to go on Department of Welfare site and look mm-hmm. at what they're being cited for. And most of the time it is because habitually they do not get these kids with relatives. Habitually mm-hmm. they get cited mm-hmm. for it, and it's a joke. The, the director just initials her name, and it's mm-hmm. never followed up on, and the, the next mm-hmm. report is the same thing. It's the same mm-hmm. citations, it's the same stuff, and it's never and followed no- up on. There's no accountability either. There's absolutely no accountability for them not fixing the problem, and and that's something that's huge indeed. It seems like, in some cases, caseworkers who did not do a good job were given promotions, and and there was one such individual that was frustrating, you know, to be to see things like that happen. And again, that's what happens when there's no oversight. And there's no accountability. It's very frustrating, and the task force did nothing to address that, which is, again, also very frustrating, especially since there were a number of people who specifically requested for that to happen, and they were ignored. Yeah. Well, thank you for exactly. taking my call. I, I well, very much appreciate all- it. That good information, I'm glad that we got to cover the, the task force. It's a shame that they couldn't have done a better job, and it could have been a really good thing. But it could have. You're right. Yeah. Right. But well, thank you, you have very a good much. day. Okay. You Bye-bye. too. Bye-bye. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye. So, yeah, the task force could have actually been a, a really good thing, and um maybe could have addressed a lot of these issues and had some oversight to these issues. But as usual, the people that were running it were the same people that benefit from this system, the way I see it. I mean, just from what I'm seeing and the research that I'm doing. But I wanted to go over also today, for those of you that are just getting into this, um, that if your children have been removed First and foremost, it the first um, things that you do can be so critical and mean the difference between you getting your children home quickly or spending years to get them back home again. Um, you need to remember throughout this entire process is that you only have three times to have a trial and only three. Another thing to remember is that if the child is three or under, they can move for termination of parental rights in just six months. And that's very scary because normally it is, I believe, 15 months that they can um, move in to take your parental rights away. But the first hearing you get is the definition hearing, and that's usually 72 hours after taking the children. Um, You have the detention hearing and... Um, this is why children are normally taken on Thursdays or Fridays, given the department until Tuesday to hold the first hearing. This gives them even more time to put their case together and more time to work on the children because understand they're in their custody now. So if need be, they can, you know, start working on them right away. Don't waste your time. You need to get a good attorney or someone that will help you explain how it works. If you go to court, with an appointed attorney, tell him that if you are innocent and demand a trial at this hearing, I mean, that that's what you want. Usually the court-appointed attorney will meet you for like five to ten minutes. It's like you don't even know each other and just agree with, you know, this one and we'll catch up, you know, later, like after this hearing is over. So that's like kind of push through. Demand a trial at this hearing. You are entitled to have a trial at that time. Demand it. They will tell you that if you fight this hearing, that all data the department has put on paper to the court will become legal fact. Don't fall for that. It is already fact as far as the court is concerned, so fight it with all you have. Don't give up. 
This is your first one, and it is so important to know that you have to demand that hearing. This is where you have your best chance of beating them as they are not ready for a trial and they don't have a case yet. So not enough time was there to put it together. This is the best time to push and win the children back. This is the only time you will get to dispute what they have done on paper for this hearing. If you do not fight, it will become that um, already dealt with and you cannot bring it up again. It has been made legal fact, done deal. So demand a trial. And um, if you agree to this hearing, they will beat you to death with it and say you admitted guilt and now need to get with the case plan, those case plans they all put together for you that you have to jump through hoops and swim across an ocean to get your children back. Do not agree to a deal unless you are guilty of what they are saying. Don't agree to a deal. Don't let your attorney stipulate to the order on your behalf. Make your attorney explain what it means. Uh, Do not state to the court that you understand what is happening. Make them spell it out. You will look stupid for doing this, as most attorneys don't understand it all, no matter what they say. You will not look stupid. Just say that you want to know, word for word, what they're doing. If your attorney does not defend you, ask for a new one. That will, plain and simply. You know, if you you don't feel that he or she is is sticking up for you, ask for another attorney. You have the right to do that. If they hold your children, they usually do this, make sure visitation is ordered by the court and have the court spell it out. Do not let the court leave it up to the caseworker. They will not let you see your children as they still need to work on them to get what they want out of them most of the time. So you absolutely need to get You know, if you wouldn't get your children, make sure that visitation is set up because they definitely will not. I hear way too many times that people don't get to see their children. So you need to do that. Make sure that your attorney does not allow the court and or the department to run the dispositional and jurisdictional hearings together. Make them hold them separately, the dispositional and the jurisdictional hearings. Make sure that they're separate. No one can come out of running them together as the facts will run together in the court and they won't be able to separate them legally themselves. So make sure that they're held separately. Um, So just reviewing, again, um, make sure that you have an attorney. If you get an appointed attorney, make sure that they're working for you. If they're not, fire them and demand that it be a hearing at that point that you want a hearing. Not that just everything they said about you goes into fact and you never even had a chance to defend that. So the jurisdiction hearing, that's usually the second hearing, and this is the one you want to keep separate. This is the second time you're entitled to a trial. If you are innocent, use the second um, time that you have to get your story heard. It is extremely important to do this as this trial, notice the word trial, is um, You have to win this one. You have to really fight hard, um, know what you need to do. Study beforehand. Make sure you've gone over everything with your attorney and that you know what you have to do. Make the attorney work and do what is right. They will tell you you don't have a chance. And um, look at what is in the paperwork. The only thing to do is to cut a deal. They will also tell you that the department is offering a great deal. Don't believe it. Because now's the time to fight and settle. In the long run, you do not want to agree to anything if it is not right. You're not cutting deals. You choose what you want to do. You need to win when you get into uh, the jurisdiction hearing. You have to win that. If you win, the children come home. Case closed. Done. Do not do anything to pop up on their radio scenes. Stay away from them. Do not sign up for welfare benefits, Medicaid, food stamps, or any other services they offer. Stay away from them and their services. And watch out for the mandated reporters, doctors, schools. Um, I just spoke to someone the other day that school called up and reported because her son hadn't had his medication. So once you're on their radar, um, a doctor's office can see a bruise. We have these mandated reporters, and they can get you right back to where you were. If you lose the jurisdiction trial, you have nothing to do but comply with the case plan. Now you're in the system. Settle in for the long haul. As we all know, it's, it just 
it's long. They're going to have you doing so many things, and usually, um, well, you do get a review every six months. So do what the case plan says as soon as possible and, um, you know, comply. Ask the worker for more, whatever you have to do. You have six months, you want to get your children back. Always remember, it's always about the kids. The fight here is to get the children back. Forget about any federal suit at this time. Work on getting your kids back. That is the mission here. If they ask you to do parenting classes, do three or four. If they send you to therapy, talk about how this is affecting your children, not you. This is about, it's it's about the kids. you got to get them back. you got to do whatever they have you doing. And I've known people that have done this, and I do know people that have had success getting their children back. So you need to do what they ask you if that's what it comes down to is therapy, parenting classes. Uh, At the six-month hearing, if you don't get your children back, start the case plan over and do more things and more services. The ones you did before the six-month review have now been used up, and now you need to start again. Comply, comply, comply. If you're working hard, there really is no reason that you can't get those children back at that hearing. Uh, If all fails, now we're at the termination of parental rights hearings. Um, These are really tricky because I have talked to more people that have said that they never even knew they signed their rights away. So many people never knew that they signed that paper. Be really, really careful what you sign. Sign nothing without an attorney reviewing it. There is no reason anywhere at any time that you have to sign papers that they shove under your pen at that moment. You have every right to have them reviewed. But once you get to this, or we're down to the determination of parental rights, by this time your children have probably been in the system at least a year, um, probably a year and a half, um, around 16 months. You're kind of tired of the battle and you have no money. You're just like worn out. Things look grim and you, it's almost lost. But you can't give up. Your children are at stake. This is the third time you have to get a trial. Make it a good one. If you lose this one, your children are gone and the only thing you have left is an appeal. This is almost always lost. Appeals are lost. Because once you get to this point, you've exhausted those other two chances, which that first one is the one you want to really get it right there. Make sure you have done everything that the court has asked you to do. Make the attorney put enough on the record to give you a good appeal on the issues. And you have to, at least, if you have to go into that appeal, you can use those things that you did, everything they told you to do. It is so difficult to work most of the time with this agency because, remember, they are receiving funds for every time they remove a child, every time. And if they claim the child is in danger so they can get them out, like I just said, it's probably going to be on a Thursday and Friday. The child probably is not in any sense of intimate danger, but this is what they, they use. It's it's how they do it. Um they just see an, it's an easy way to keep their jobs, and it's an easy way of making money. And they're very good at making up stories and fabricating things. Um, we've been told by social workers that are in this that have been whistleblowers that there are meetings teaching them how to make up stories, what to do, how to, to create these false documents that they do. It's It's a training that they have, and that's what the whistleblowers say. So... Um, I believe them because they're just seem to, they've perfected more of this stuff than they actually have of what they're supposed to be doing as a social worker. And I, you can read through what their jobs are as social workers and <laughs> be respectful was one which made me really laugh because I never met a respectful one. And that's sad to say, but just haven't. When they're trying to get something out of you, that's about the only time they're going to act like they're your friend. But these people receive a lot of additional funds for every child that they take. And if they're going to take those those rights, parental rights, away from you, they're going to get that child adopted out and um, get money for doing that. 
I have heard a lot in the news lately, and this isn't to say that you don't want to win those first two hearings before you get to the parental rights, but I have heard a lot in the news lately where um, parents are actually getting children back that were adopted out, um, probably not as being a part of these hearings, but as not being a part of those hearings and having that chance to comply to things, that they can come back. So some of these people that are adopting people, uh, their children out of the system are never really safe if a parent that wasn't right there involved comes back and says, I want my child. Um, there's been some really big stories about that, and I I definitely have seen that it happened. So... Um, it's, I guess you can oh, never stop fighting for your child if you're a person out there that they've done this to. Fight for your child. Everybody feels so defeated. I just spoke with someone today, and they feel so defeated by the system that they could never win a lawsuit or that they don't have a chance. And I, in my heart, feel that these people have a really good chance because this is their daughter. You know, this is their son. And what CYS did to them is 100% wrong. Now, do they have an attorney to do that? No. Do they have the money to even think about finding an attorney? No. So call out to Pennsylvania attorneys. There's a lot of people out there that need your help. If you can do some pro bono work for these people, it would be so appreciated to get some of these cases on record of what this agency is doing, how they're taking their children, how their children are 15, 16 years old now, and they want their child. They are learning more and more about their system. They're starting to educate themselves more. And I truly believe a lot of these parents deserve to have that child back. And I wish I was an attorney so I could help them, but I am not. So this is all just from experience and my opinions and the interviews that I do and the guests that I have on that I learn more about cases day after day after day. So um, don't ever give up. You know, do what they they want you to do and and try and get your kids back no matter what. You know, make that attorney work for you. It is so very important. So we are the Pennsylvania Coalition for Family and Parents' Rights, and we have a hotline set up for anyone that uh, wants to get some help, some support, get some questions answered. We try and do that. We're not attorneys. We don't have an attorney on in our group yet. Uh, Any attorney that wants to come aboard, we'd be more than happy to have you. Our hotline number is 206-339-9456. That is also our fax number if you have anything that you need to fax us. And we have an email address, info underscore PA coalition at gmx.com. And we will try and get you um, the support. We do court watches. We are going to be at the rally in Scranton at the courthouse on April 26th from 12 to 3. If you can make it out there, it is a good chance to hear uh, more people speak out on this. And I believe there will be some attorneys there. There's going to be some really good information um, with the speakers on civil rights that are going to be there. And um, there will be stuff for the kids to do. And um, I believe there will be some individuals, obviously, that have been through the system that are going to to be speaking. If you want to speak, uh, you can more than you're probably more than welcome to do that. You can get a hold of the coalition, and we'll give you the information to get a hold of somebody that could arrange that. So I am. Um, that's all I got for today. I think it was another good show. We learn a little bit more each time, and I will talk to everybody on Friday, one o'clock. If you want to be a guest on the show, you can call the call-in number six four six five nine five two one three seven, and um, tell us your story or any experiences you have. We're always open to hear more about what's going on out there. Everybody, have a great day. Thanks. Bye.